Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from Budapest. I hope everybody has a good week so far. In this lesson, we are looking at a task one writing for the academic IELTS, looking for a BART chart essay that is band nine. Hi, Awaz, I'm doing great, thank you. Hi, Tito, I'm doing well. I hope both of you are doing well also. Uh, while we wait for a few more members to join in on the class and some of your peers, a little bit about us. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, please visit us there. And for the general version of the test, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of materials for you to improve your IELTS scores, your English, and your communication. I'll show you those websites super quick. I see lots of members are joining in. That's fantastic. This is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join our premium package. It's a self-study course. You can study from home, watch lots and lots of videos, interactive lessons for your phone, tablet, PC, and original practice exams. This is the general version of the website with the green background for general IELTS. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Abhishek, Rodrigo, Pavan, Sam, Tito, Kisi, and Preeti. Nice to see many of you in class on time. That's fantastic. All right, everyone. If you have questions, you can email me, adrian at aehelp.com. And of course, you can get our exam books to follow these lessons from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS and for general, search for GE Helps General IELTS on Amazon. All right, students, so today task one followed by some reading. Let's get into today's lesson. Here we go. All right, so task one academic, you should spend 20 minutes on this task, not a minute more. Make sure to spend 40 minutes on task two. Hi, Vimal. All right, uh, step one, always read the question carefully. So let's do that now, students. Let's read this question. The following chart shows the percent of budget expenditures for various purposes in several countries. Describe the main features and make comparisons where relevant. You must write at least 100 uh, 50 words. Puneet, this is definitely academic. For general IELTS, you're writing a letter, so it's very, very different. You can check that out on our general IELTS channel. All right, students. So uh, the next step, of course, is to look at the actual chart. Okay, so here we go. Percent of expenditures in 2009, uh, here on the y-axis, we have the percents. 30% is the maximum. And the intervals are 5%. So right now, I'm just going through step by step of how I observe the bar chart so I get a good idea of what I'm doing, what my job is before I begin writing. Okay, and then we have our bars and we have the independent variable for each one. Food, housing, transportation, healthcare, and clothing. And then of course here we have our second independent variable, which is United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and Japan. All right. Uh, members, can you see the graph okay? Is it clear? Uh, How is the brightness? If it's too bright or too dark, let me know so I can adjust some settings. Hopefully it's clear. Okay, so I looked at the bar chart. I looked at the question. Uh, what's my next step? So what do I do now? Thanks for Dobbs. Thanks Pedro for answering that last question. Now let's see who can answer my current question. So I read the question. I looked at the chart. Now what do I do? Okay, so Awaz says, well, the next step is clearly to paraphrase the question 
with some more details. Yeah, absolutely. So paraphrase with more details. Abhishek, you need to do that before you label your points for analysis. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Ferdovs, with more details. So let's do that now. Let's um, paraphrase this question and give it some more detail. And of course, this will become the first part of our overview. Okay. I know that there are a lot of examples out there where they do a separate introduction from the overview. It's not necessary. The overview and the introduction are the same idea. If I give you an overview of my life, I'm basically giving you an introduction to my life. Okay. So you don't need to separate those two elements. They can definitely be one paragraph. So here we go. Uh, paraphrase these, give these, uh, give this information more detail. I'll bring up the uh, bar graph one more time so you can get some more ideas. Again, it's percent of expenditures in 2009. You have zero to 30% max. And then you have food, housing, transportation, healthcare, clothing for the countries United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and Japan. Okay. So. Here's the question one more time. Of course, for you, it's a little bit easier in the actual test because you see it all together. Okay, I'm going to start my paraphrase with details also, and then we'll compare with each other. Okay, so. All right, I'm done my paraphrase and I've added some more detail, of course, to uh, the information as well. Let's see if you come up with a similar concept. I'll bring back the bar chart to give you a little bit more help here. Again, it's in 2009. So the year of the bar chart is 2009. And we have lots and lots of members in class today, which is fantastic. Um, let's see how you come up with your paraphrase. Okay, meanwhile, I'll read mine. So the given bar chart illustrates the percent of people's budgets on food, housing, healthcare, transportation, and clothing in the US, UK, Japan, and Canada in 2009. So notice how, of course, I upgraded the word chart to bar chart the percent of budget expenditures. The given bar chart illustrates the percent of people's budget. And I'm going to improve that a little bit now that I'm looking at it. Budget spending. So I'm going to paraphrase the word expenditures with spending. Budget spending on food, housing, healthcare, transportation. So instead of various purposes, this is a good place to actually list what those expenses are, especially when you only have about four or five, then list those. Let your reader know that you realize what those expenses are. Okay. And then in several countries. So instead of several countries, I'm detailing those countries in the US, UK, Japan, and Canada. Now notice that for United States, United Kingdom, I'm just using the shorter acronym. I don't want to spend a lot of time writing out those words. I want to save that time and energy for more information and detail in the task. 
All right, Awaz says, the given chart depicts the portion of resources investments for food, housing, transportation, healthcare in Canada, the United States, United Kingdom, and Japan in 2009. Okay, Awaz, not bad. Notice how Awaz, yours is almost the same as mine, but in fact, you're actually using more characters, so you're writing longer, but you have a little bit less information. So you don't mention that it's a bar chart. You say the given chart. Uh, name the chart, students. So you'll notice that in IELTS Task 1, they usually don't name the chart in the question. They don't say it's a line uh, graph or a line chart or pie chart. So add that in right away. Just show your examiners, the reader, that you know what type of chart you're looking at right off the bat, okay? All right, uh, otherwise it's not bad, it was, okay? Uh, portion of uh, investment is not the right word, it was, because investment is when we spend money to make money, and these wouldn't be considered investments, okay? Uh, housing, perhaps, but food and those on, that's just uh, sustenance, so investments isn't the best word. Okay, so you want to find a better word. Uh, Ferdob says, the given bar graph depicts four uh, budget consumables, food, housing, transportation, healthcare, and clothing in four developed countries in 2009. Okay, I like how you say four developed countries. Um, that's kind of an interesting observation to make. Maybe name the countries, Ferdob. Uh, okay, Tito says, the chart below indicates... Uh, funds paid for various aims in different nations. Okay, Tito here, it's not the same idea as paraphrasing the question in uh, task two where you're just getting an idea, but here you're actually using the paraphrase to start the overview, okay? That's one tip. The other tip, Tito, and this is for everyone, uh, don't refer to the location of the graph on the paper. That's awkward. Okay, so don't say the charts below, okay, or the charts beside. So don't refer to the locations of objects on your exam paper. That's a little bit awkward, all right? Uh, you have to write task one in a way that a person who is not looking at the paper, at the question, can understand the information, okay? That's a really important point that I just made there, all right? So keep that in mind. So when you're writing... Write in such a way that if a person reads your essay who has not seen this chart, they can get a good idea of what it is that you're discussing. Okay, that's a good way to test the quality of your essay. Give it to a friend, give it to one of your fellow students, ask them to read it, and ask, does that make sense? Can you visualize and understand this chart that I'm describing? And if they say, not really, then probably you need to think about rewriting it, okay? Elena says, the following bar graph depicts the budget uh, in the year 2009 for five purposes, uh, food, housing, transportation, healthcare, uh, and clothing for four different countries, uh, UK, US, Japan, and Canada. Uh, Elena, you have to use the word and uh, when you're making a list for the last elements. It is... A bit awkward there's some rare situations where you can do it that way but not here not on the aisles okay so don't forget the word and healthcare is two words put the comma after care uh, food non plural here we rarely use the word foods okay all right uh, Preeti says the bar chart describes the proportion of money spent on food housing healthcare transportation and clothing in four different countries in 2009. Uh, Preeti, uh, be careful with your order of words. It's not in different four countries, but it's in four different countries. That's tip number one. Tip number two, Preeti, Yogi, uh, that this is the sentence you wrote. It's a passive voice in this case. So money spent, not spend money on food, but money spent on food with a T instead of D on the spend, okay? So pay attention to that. IELTS is tricky because many of you are writing some good sentences and you're only making a few mistakes, but unfortunately those few mistakes can really cost you band scores, okay? Especially if it's confusing. So Preeti, 
the way that you wrote yours, it would be considered a band five, 5.5. 5, because those are not mistakes that a native speaker would make. Okay, Native speakers could make mistakes and would likely make some mistakes with this kind of writing, but not these kinds of mistakes. The mistakes that you made pre-T make comprehension awkward, and that's why they cost so many marks. So if you make those corrections, you suddenly go from a 5.5 up to an 8. Okay, it's... I know that's challenging, but you can do it. Just keep practicing. That's why it's so important to review, revise, and correct your mistakes always. Uh, Rodrigo Duarte says, the given bar chart depicts the percentages of budget expenses for a series of purposes, namely food, housing, transportation, healthcare, and clothing in US, Canada, UK, and Japan in 2009. Good. Uh, just one tiny little mistake, Rodrigo. Um, in perfect writing, you should write in the U.S. For some reason, U.S. takes the before the, the acronym. So in the U.S., but Rodrigo, that mistake would not cost you much. So you're still at a band 8.5. Okay. All right. Doing well. Doing well, students. Abhishek says the column bar chart compares the percent of expenditures of various necessities on food, housing, healthcare, transportation, and clothing in four countries in 2009. That's nice, Abhishek. Um, I like how you put the word necessities. Uh, it's a nice noun to use there because you're absolutely right. Another high-level vocabulary for necessities in this case is sustenance needs. Okay, sustenance needs. Uh, Kesey says the given bar chart represents the proportion of spending on food, housing, healthcare, transportation, and clothing in the U.S., U.K., Japan, and Canada in the year 2009. Uh, Kesey, good. Um, you don't need the word money after spending, Kesey, because spending in this case can become the noun. I know that's tricky, but that's why I'm telling you. Um, and uh, you don't need in the year of, you don't need the of, the OF before the 2009, it's unnecessary, okay? All right, students, so that's a little bit of detailed feedback. Uh, I always like to take a little bit of extra time and effort uh, to give you feedback on these first sentences because you want your first sentence to be as perfect as possible, okay? That's your first impression for the writing section. Keep that in mind, okay? So really work hard to have a very clear, accurate, high quality uh, sentence for this first sentence for two reasons, because you're paraphrasing information that's given, okay? And it introduces your ability to write for the entire writing section, not just task one, but even task two, okay? So this is an important tip. Uh, be extra careful with the first sentence of task one as this introduces your English writing ability for the entire uh, writing section. So it's worth double checking, triple checking, okay? It's worth double triple checking this sentence for accuracy and clarity, okay? Especially because you're uh, paraphrasing. All right, uh, good. So now we have the first sentence of our overview. And... Uh, What's next? What do we do after this first sentence of the overview? I'm just gonna stick this underneath here so we can follow a little bit more smoothly. Um, what do I do next? What's my next step after completing the paraphrase with the details? This is what the task is asking us for. I'm sure most of you will come up with the right answer here. To identify the main feature, okay? I'm trying to fit as much of the graph into the screen as possible. Uh, try to keep in mind, students, that blue is United States, red 
is Canada, gray is the UK, and uh, orange yellow, canary color, uh, is uh, Japan, okay? So US, Canada, UK, Japan. So basically you're moving west to east if you're thinking about the globe, okay? So if you're thinking of the earth, you're moving from west to east. And uh, US is further west than Canada, thanks to Hawaii, right? Hawaii is way over there on the west. So uh, US, Canada, UK, Japan, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, and you're right about the main feature, Preeti. So what is the main feature? What do we notice primarily? I think it's very clear in this case what the main feature is. I'm hoping that you will come up with the same answer. I don't want to tell you this because I think that you should be able to um, see the main feature here clearly, okay? There's a very, very clear main feature here that you will be able to uh, write in your overview and then you can detail further in the body paragraph in the analysis. So what is that? What jumps out at you? Again, you don't need to look at numbers. You shouldn't be thinking of most to least. Okay, Charlie says, all countries spent a lot of their budget on housing, except Japan spent a lot on uh, food. Mm, I think that's too much detail, Charlie. I think there's a much simpler um, main feature that we can observe here. Okay. Uh, Elena says most of the money is spent on housing. Again, I don't think that's the main feature. So you have to, if you're looking for those really nice high bands, uh, Charlie, Elena, you have to be a little bit more creative in uh, many of these graphs than most and least, okay? A lot of students are writing most and least, and I think the examiners are often like, really, guys, most and least? Um, so try to take it a, a step further. Okay. One way that you can do this is uh, either physically on your exam paper or visually uh, circle the features. Okay, so if I circle my features here, I can do this. Okay, all right. Um, so if I'm going to cook you dinner, which eggs would you like me to use for dinner? so that you are full and uh, nourished, okay? So all I did here is just visually grouped what I see, okay? Uh, Pavan says, all these countries spent more on housing and least on healthcare. Okay, again, you're looking for most and least. I'm looking for a bit more than that. So Vimal says, housing and food costs are more than, uh, are more, for these nationalities than other expenses. Almost Vimal. Vimal is the closest so far. Uh, Ferdov says, overall, it is clear that most finances were spent on food, housing, and transportation in all given countries, whereas healthcare and clothing uh, required less of people's budget. Ferdov, that's right. That's your band nine overview. Okay. So uh, if you disagree with me, members, just tell me. Say, hey, Adrian, you're out to lunch. I completely disagree. But if we compare Ferdov's uh, overview of the main feature uh, compared to the other ones that I read about the most on housing, which one do you think technically is worth a higher band? So which one would you give a band 9 to and which one would you give a band 6.5 or 7 to if you're the examiner? Would you give the 6.5 to Elena and the 9 to Ferdov's or vice versa? Right? Think about that. And I know that's a loaded question. I agree with you. I'm sure most of you will come up with that. But I promise you that most of the examiners will give Ferdov's the nine. Okay? So, and I'm not poking at anybody that anybody could make the same uh, difference or mistake, okay? Or discrepancy. So, uh, clearly, food, housing, and transportation took the lion's share of people's budget in this year compared to the remaining healthcare and clothing, okay? So that's what I would write for my overview. Uh, so clearly, 
food, housing, and transportation made up the greatest percent of uh, citizens' expenses in 2009, as where healthcare and clothing were minimal in comparison. Okay, so very similar to uh, what uh, Ferdov's uh, wrote, just uh, worded a little bit differently. And here again, of course, it's the idea that matters. Okay, so the idea. Um, remember, students, I know I say this quite often, but uh, I can't say it enough, especially for those of you who are taking the academic IELTS. Uh, the IELTS is not just an English test, okay? Um, that's a really um, bad uh, misconception that can lead to low scores is students are focusing a lot on their English and not enough on their communication and critical thinking, okay? The fastest way to improve your band score on the IELTS is often with the information that you provide rather than with the English that you provide, okay? Yeah, Elena, much better. So nice correction. So Elena says, looking at the data, it is clear that most of the money is spent on food, housing, and transportation. Conversely, few money is spent on healthcare and clothing. That's a much, much better main feature, Elena. Much, much better. Okay. All right. Um, so far, so good. And I mean, we can see that there's variance, slight variance with each country on who's spending what, where. Uh, but overall, this is true, okay? Now we can get into some more details. So uh, let's uh, look at the bar charts a little bit more carefully now and uh, make some points for comparison, okay? So what do you think is the best approach to analyze this bar chart? Is it comparing each country one at a time, or is it comparing each type of expenditure one after the next? So each country one at a time or each expenditure? Which one do you think is the better approach in this case? Which one will be the easier, more sensible approach? Trying to start by saying US spends this much on food, this much on housing, transportation, healthcare, clothing compared to Japan, who spends this much on this? Or should we start with, for example, housing, which seems to take the lion's share of all of them, and compare expenses in housing, and then move on to perhaps food, then transportation, and the others? So which would you do? Yeah, okay, so nice. I like the answers that I'm seeing. Awaz says, compare each expenditure. It seems to make more sense. It'll be easier to write. Pavan says each expenditure, Tito, uh, Charlie agrees. Yeah, so Kisi, um, not both. I, I think maybe I confused you a little bit, Kisi. So of course we're going to name the countries as well, but our pivot point, so where we're moving from, is that the countries are the expenditures, right? The expenditures are the easier ones, okay? Uh, definitely. Okay, so it's better to focus on housing first. So all we want to do here is, number one, make a comparison among these bars, among these expenses in the countries. Then maybe move here to number two for food. Make these comparisons here. Then number three, make these comparisons here. And then if we still have lots of time and we're doing a good job, we can move to perhaps clothing and then we can move to healthcare, okay? So that would be the best strategy, focusing on the expenditure before focusing on the country. So if you start by writing uh, United States spent the most on housing and they spent the least on clothing as where uh, Canadians spent more on clothing, 
but spent uh, the least on housing, that's going to get awkward. Okay, if you start jumping around like that, that, that will get awkward. So instead of that, let's do housing. Now, for housing, um, what, what would you say? So what is a good analysis for housing? And this is our first sentence of the analysis, okay? So for housing, uh, the lowest was spent by Canadians at around 22% of their budget, okay? And the most was spent by Americans at around 27%. These don't have to be perfect, just roughly. Okay, and then uh, Japan and uh, UK were somewhere in between at 23 and uh, 24%, roughly, or 22, 24%. Canadians, maybe 21. Um, so write the sentence that you think makes the most sense for describing these countries' expenses on housing. Okay, I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare, but th these are our points of comparison. So first we're starting with housing. Okay, again, your critical thinking and analysis are key for your high band scores here, all right? If you write a cookie cutter essay, as is taught in many IELTS classes and many online courses, you will get a cookie cutter band six, 6.5 mark even if you write it perfectly, okay? So I really want to emphasize this. I haven't really kind of um, attacked this uh, notion in the past, but I'm going to do it now, and I think I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive with this in coming classes because I'm still seeing too much of these cookie-cutter essays and then students being really disappointed with their band scores, okay? So here's a really important tip. Uh, if you write cookie cutter, is it one word? No, <laughs> cookie cutter, sounds like it should be one word. If you write cookie cutter essays for task one and task two, like U.S. spent the most on and Canada spent the least on, or for task two, you write, this essay will discuss the negatives of, da, 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 da. Um, then you will get a cookie cutter band score of 6.5 or less, even with perfect English, with close to perfect English, let's see. You might get a bit more with perfect English, but even with close to perfect English. Okay, does that make sense, students, about the cookie cutter? Does everybody know what a cookie cutter is? So a cookie cutter, it's uh, if you have, a, like, let's say a heart-shaped cookie cutter, uh, it's a piece of metal, and then when you have your dough flattened out, and you just tick, 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 and you get lots of cookies that are the same heart shape. That's a cookie cutter, okay? So don't do that. Please don't do that. The uh, IELTS examiners are not creating these questions to see cookie cutter essays, all right? We had uh, a student from Switzerland a couple months ago who had a 6.5 on their writing because they were using the cookie cutter method. Then they learned this strategy and these proper methods of analysis and reporting information. And that student went from a 6.5 to an 8.5. Guess how much time was between the student's two exams? Two weeks. Went from a 6.5 to an 8.5 in two weeks. Obviously, he didn't improve his English that much in two weeks. It was just the strategy. And he wrote us a really nice email and a little bit angry, saying, I'm not sure why there are so many lessons on the internet and in schools that teach these cookie cutter methods. So uh, enough about that. Let's get back to point here. Again, I just really wanna drive that point home, okay? So uh, let's write the analysis, okay? Write the analysis for housing, okay? So this is your number one. 
write it for housing, all right? I'm going to do the same. So this is our analysis coming up. So analysis, okay. All right, that's housing. Okay, let's see what you come up with. Uh, Rodrigo Duarte says, when looking at this bar graph in more detail, it is clear that all countries had similar expenditures for housing, ranging from 22% in Canada to 27% in the US. Very good, Rodrigo. That's your band nine analysis, okay? Not least in most focusing, but focusing on the concept that they relatively spent close to the same amounts. Okay, so here we have a near line, okay, for the expenses. So if we take the average of these, you get a very straight line, or if I, I shouldn't say average, I should say the mean or the mode, sorry, the mode or the median of these, then you get a very, very similar expenditure here. So Canadians still over a fifth of all money and um, Americans over a quarter of their entire budget, but all of these countries spent a lot on housing. They all spent more on housing than just about anything else with the exception of Japan, but we don't need to go into that detail, okay? All right. Um, Ferdovs, going into more detail, the country's expenses on housing was roughly similar, about 23%. Yeah, okay, that works for Dobbs. I like it. I'd let you get away with that. They were roughly similar, okay? Elena, after deeper analysis, USA spent the most on their budget on housing, roughly 27%. On the other hand, UK spent just a bit less than the US, roughly 23%. Uh, Elena, don't get lost in uh, just the percents. What you're looking for here is that all of the countries had the greatest expense on housing with the exception of, like I say, Japan, you can go down that road if you wish. But more importantly, it's that they're all spending a lot. Here's my, on housing, here's my uh, first sentence. At deeper inspection, all of these countries, people spent most of their budgets on housing anywhere from over a fifth to over a quarter of their total funds. I should finish that a little bit more clearly of their purse. We can use that word there. Okay, uh, Canada being the lowest at 21% and the US the highest at 27%. So if you really want to get that highest lowest in there, you can, but just get the more important information in there first, okay? So at deeper inspection, all of these countries, people spent most of their budgets on housing anywhere from over a fifth to over a quarter of their purse. Purse is your total amount of money that you have to spend. Canada being the lowest at 21% and the US the highest at 27%. Uh, purse, of course, many of you know this word as a woman's purse, but purse can also mean the money that you have to spend, okay? Abhishek, uh, looking at the graph in more detail, housing is the most expensive for Americans at 27%, following the UK at 24, Canadians and Japanese 23 and 21% respectively. Abhishek, same tip as for Elena, you're getting lost in the numbers too much, okay? Um, you don't want to sound robotic in task one, 
okay? It's really important. So you'll get a higher band score. It's okay to report some numbers. It's my next tip for you, but you don't want to sound robotic, okay? So tip, it's okay to report certain numbers and figures for task one, but do not overdo this, okay? You do not, you must not sound like a robot or I shouldn't say sound because you're not speaking. You must not read like a robot, okay? Like USA spent the most on housing at 27%, followed by Japan at 23%. Next came the UK at 22%, and finally the U Canadians at 21%. Okay, so you, you must not sound like that. If we want to get that information, all we need to do is just look at the graph and look at the numbers. Okay, you're processing this information. That's why it's an expository essay, because expository essays seek to explain information. You're not giving an opinion. Be very careful. You're not giving an opinion, but you are explaining the information. Okay, you're not just describing it because that would be a descriptive essay. This is an expository essay. All right, students. Um, so here we go. Uh, next, up to you, I would go with food, but it would be okay to go with transportation. That's not going to cost you marks. Okay, uh, so let's go with food. Uh, food, we can clearly see some big differences. Japanese, in fact, spent more on food than on housing. Uh, and then second uh, were the, uh, U, uh, the UK, the Brits, then after that Canadians, and then the US, right? So let's make uh, notes of that. I mean, the percents, okay, US under 15, Canadians 15, uh, UK 20, uh, Japanese up at uh, 23%, okay? So um, let's write about that. Okay, so this one, easy to keep in mind, you're moving from west to east, from lowest to most, all right? So conversely, I'm going to write this, you write this as well, all right? So again, remember students, when you have percents like 15, 10, 20, 25, 30, you can also use words like a tenth, a fifth, a quarter, roughly a third, okay? So again, making your language as human as possible. Keep that in mind, all right? Okay. All right, so there is my next sentence for you. I'm also waiting for your sentences, students. Keep thinking. I know I'm challenging you, but keep going. So conversely, there are significant discrepancies among countries for the purpose of food consumption. The Americans, 
uh, spent the least on of their budget, followed by Canadians, then the Brits, and finally the Japanese, who spent nearly a quarter of their money on this commodity. Okay. Let me make a few corrections here. Again, at home, when I'm practicing, I'm always looking to improve my writing. So conversely, there are significant discrepancies among countries for... the amount of money spent on food. Okay, and I'm gonna take out the word consumption. It's a bit awkward. So we're focusing with on money here, okay? The Americans spent the least of their budget followed by Canadians, then the Brits, and finally the Japanese, comma, who spent nearly a quarter of their money on this commodity. Okay, let's see what you come up with. For Dobbs says, whereas spending on food was different from 14% in the USA to 23% in Japan in this given year. Yeah, for Dobbs, I like it. You don't have to overdo it. You don't have to report every single country. Okay, it's good. I like it. Rodrigo says, secondly, for food, US and Canada spent around 14%, while in UK and Japan, that purpose accounted for roughly... 20 and 23 percent respectively. Rodrigo, that's beautiful writing. Okay, really nice writing there. Uh, Charlie Sen says, uh, Rodrigo, you do definitely should state that food is quite different from housing and that there are a lot of differences among the countries as where with uh, housing, they're much more similar. Okay, so that's a good comparison to make. Charlie Sen says, looking at food, Japan spent almost a quarter of their budget uh, 23%, whereas USA spent nearly 13%, the least among these countries. Canada and UK spent roughly 15 and 20% respectively. Okay, not bad, Charlie. Um, maybe don't even mention the UK and Canada in this case if you're going most to least on this one. Um, you could just say Canada and UK were between. Okay. Elena says, uh, on the contrary... In contrary, hmm, I don't think so, Elena. I've never seen it like that, in contrary. On the contrary, uh, U.S. and Canada spend almost the same amount of money on food, just a fifth of their total expenditure. Um, 15%, 14, 15%, it's uh, closer to a seventh of their expenditure, whereas Japan spent most of their money on food. Canada spent between USA and Japan at 25%. Um, you mean the UK. So Elena, be really careful with uh, your information. So it's one seventh for US and Canada. And I think you meant to write United Kingdom instead of Canada for that last sentence, okay? Uh, Kesey says, in terms of food, uh, interestingly, Japan spent the uh, most of their budget, about a quarter, even more than housing, the Americans had the least uh, expense for food, followed by Canadians. Okay, Kesey, I think you have the right ideas going on there, but a little bit awkward phrasing. So try to rewrite that, okay? All right, uh, members, I spent a bit more time today reviewing your sentences and also uh, just giving you general information to keep in mind when you're tackling these task one um, graphs and charts. So I'm not going to rush through transportation, healthcare, and clothing. I'm going to leave these ones for you. Okay, so finish the analysis. And then yes, I would like you to write a brief summary, a one or two sentence summary, what we can take away from this graph, okay? So what we learn after going through the analysis. The summary is not the same as the overview. The big difference, and this will be my last tip. So instead of writing an introduction overview analysis, write an overview analysis and summary. You will do better, believe me, okay? Our students have proven this day after day. So write a, an overview analysis and a summary. The summary, it's the exact same that we would do in a business meeting 
or um, in a presentation in university where we introduce the um, the bar graph. So we introduce what we're looking at. We give an overview. Then we go into the details. Maybe we have uh, a little uh, laser uh, pointer. Let me see if I have one here. There you go. So we're in university here and we're giving a, a presentation and we go, as we can see, housing uh, took up the lion's share of expenses in 2009 for these four countries. Uh, they were roughly equal at between 20. So we go through it. And then when we're wrapping up our presentation for our colleagues or our fellow students in university, then we give a summary. We say, so in summary, after going through the data in detail, we can learn that in this year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That will be your homework to come up with that. You're doing the same when you're writing this task one essay. Instead of an expository presentation, you're giving an expository essay. And that will get you those band eight, band nines. As long as you write it with fairly good English, I guarantee that you will do better, okay? So uh, my last tip here is write an overview, analysis, and summary, okay? The summary is the valuable information that we learn after analyzing the graph. It is not an opinion. So you can't say, for example, you can't say that, oh, Americans spent the most on housing because they have the most expensive houses. We don't know if they have the most expensive houses. In fact, I would uh, argue that Japan, on average, has the most expensive housing for square footage. So you can't give that opinion. You have to give what we can truly learn by just looking at the graph, okay? All right, members, fantastic. I'm looking forward to those completed essays. You don't have to rewrite the beginning unless you want to. I'm just looking uh, for the remaining uh, three expenditures, uh, healthcare, transportation, and um, clothing. And of course, I'm looking for your summary. So please send those uh, to my email, adrian at aehelp.com, so I can give you a little bit of feedback and a uh, score estimate for those essays, okay? Focus on the points that we discussed today. That's it, students. Any questions, members, really quickly? I can take a, an extra minute if you have a question right now. If not, it's okay. Abhishek says, sure, that's clear. Any questions about this uh, information? Elena says, okay, sounds good. All right. And keep up the good work, students. Okay, keep going. Uh, for everybody who's watching, in uh, about 30 minutes, I will host another class for reading. It will be an academic passage, but uh, for reading, the academic passage uh, is very similar to uh, section three of the general reading. So Rodrigo says, thank you, sir. All right, then uh, members, have uh, an awesome uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you in half an hour in the reading class. It's always a pleasure to uh, see you improve and see your English. Much love. Bye for now. See you shortly.